My name is Rachel Winard, and I am the founder of Soapwalla, which is a natural skin care company based in Brooklyn, New York. I never thought I was going to have a skincare company. I didn't grow up wanting to have a business. Um, and really, this whole passion for skincare came about because of my health issues. Uh, second day of law school was 9 11. So, for me, law school and the city really actively mourning are all jumbled together. Right around that exact time, I started getting really sick. And I didn't know what was going on. Before that, I barely had headaches. Um, I was never sick as a child. My skin was great. I didn't even have pimples as a teenager. Like I just never hit any health bumps. And pretty much overnight, I went from being very healthy to very sick for a really long period of time. That first year of law school, where I was just trying to get my bearings um, and also watching my city kind of literally put pieces of itself back together. Um, I got bronchitis four times. Um, I pretty much always was running fevers. I'd get crazy full body rashes. One day I just spent a few hours in the sun and I ended up getting sun sickness, which I hadn't previously known was even a thing. <laughs> I got cat scratch fever. I was getting all sorts of weird illnesses and reactions to things that really shouldn't have been um, problems for me at all had I had a healthy immune system. And so I, I suffered for the first year, um, really just hoping it, like, it would go away or it was just stress or all of those things you tell yourself when you know something's really wrong but you don't know how to start dealing with it. But by the second year of law school, I was like, no, something's really, really wrong. I haven't gotten better. Now I know it's not mono, it hasn't run its course. Things are actually getting worse. Um, at its worst point, which was in law school, my skin was so reactive, I couldn't even put water on it. I was desperate to get some relief. Your skin is your largest organ and it's an immune functioning organ, so it really is sort of like a canary telling you when other things are more fundamentally going wrong. So I started my process of trying to figure out what the hell was going on with me. So I went to, God, I don't even know actually how many doctors I went to at the beginning. I just kept getting bounced around from one to another to another. I remember the first doctor, because I had extreme fatigue, decided he should test me for what was then called juvenile diabetes and is now called type 1 diabetes. And that was it. So when that came back negative, he was like, mm, I don't know. Um, you should go see someone else. <laughs> so then I went to another doctor who was like, it's in your head. You should see a shrink. And then I saw a series of doctors who said something along those same lines, including one who was like, well, you're a girl. You know, emotions can get really hard at times. I think really what you need to do is figure out how to manage your stress. <laughs> There's something wrong with me. <laughs> I know this fundamentally. And when you're really sick and you have to do this sort of investigative journalism, basically, to figure out what's wrong with you, it can feel incredibly daunting and overwhelming but I wasn't willing to give up because I wasn't willing to live the way I was feeling. And probably my 15th doctor was this great man. He was 85, he was getting ready to retire. And um, I think I was the last patient he saw. He was working at the Columbia University like Student Medical Center. And he asked me questions that nobody had asked before. He really listened to me and he helped me sort of figure out that all these crazy things that were happening might actually be connected. Um, and he was the one who finally said, you know, I'd like to test you for lupus. Has anyone tested you for lupus? And I said, no, I don't even know what that thing is. <laughs> so he explained it to me. Um, and he explained it to me in such lovely terms. He used layman's terms and he didn't, um, he didn't scare me. I didn't leave thinking that was it. I was going to die if this result came back positive. Um, when the test came back positive, he sat down with me and walked me through step by step what this would mean. So my next steps after that were to find a dermatologist for skin biopsies. Um, I have systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE for short. There are various kinds of lupus. Um, the systemic part means that I have internal organ involvement as well, but across the board, Nearly everyone who has lupus has skin issues because it is your largest organ. And then I had to find a rheumatologist to handle the internal issues. And I, had, I personally had to find a hematologist because I was having a particular kind of blood reaction. 
That was my next step, was to find a whole team of doctors because everyone is highly specialized. Um, and I found out very soon that no one talked to each other. Um, so I was sort of this odd, like, um, pinball bouncing from place to place, trying to synthesize what everyone was saying, trying to make sure that all of my documentation got to the right place. It was like a full-time job, um, but it did help prepare me for how to best advocate for myself. It was a, it was a steep learning curve, but it was also really vital, and it, um, I definitely use those skills still today when I see a new doctor. I know exactly how I want to be treated, how I expect to be treated, and um, how I need that uh, appointment to go. That was when I really had to also navigate as an openly gay person, a lot of homophobia in the medical community um, that I wasn't prepared for. I had people um, test me for AIDS when I was there for lupus specific, and never ask my permission. Um, I had a doctor walk out of a room um, when she asked me about what kind of birth control I was on and I said I wasn't on any and then she started to belittle me for that choice and when I explained why since I was a lesbian um, she left the room and would not come back in and did not finish the exam. So also while being really sick and trying to figure out all of these disparate parts of getting myself better I had to deal with shocking amount of homophobia in the medical community. It took a long time to find doctors I felt comfortable with. And it also took me feeling okay saying like, it's not, you can't treat me that way. And I also, you can't leave the room after you've taken blood and said some medical mumbo jumbo. Uh, I, like, I wanna know what this means. I want you to take me step by step through what all of these tests are because I need to know what you're testing. I need to know what the results are because it's my body. <laughs> and I need to know why you're prescribing the medication you are. Um, during that time, I was put on all sorts of crazy drug protocols, some of which I, looking back, I know I needed because my body was really in um, acute, acute distress. So for lupus and for any autoimmune illness, your immune system gets confused and it starts attacking your own cells, thinking they're foreign bodies, um, which can cause a lot of damage to the body and a lot of stress on the body. Um, we tried a bunch of different protocols um, to get my liver, my lungs, and my blood under control because those are the three organs for me that always get involved. Um, when none of those less invasive measures worked, I was constantly in a flare-up, basically. Um, my doctors prescribed uh, chemotherapy. I figured if we couldn't get it under control, we had to just get rid of it. Um, I was on chemo, I was on three chemo drugs for a year. And it wasn't like a cancer protocol where you take high doses once a week. It was slightly lower doses every single day and then one injection once a week. So my body needed to stop fighting all the time. And I needed that wake up call to realize that this was not how I was gonna spend the rest of my life. So after a year solid of that with, with my blood showing progress but not remission, and me realizing there was no way I was gonna make it much longer on this protocol, feeling like absolute crap, not being able to keep anything down. I was like barely 90 pounds at the time. Um, and I was working at a law firm. So I was also, I had all of that stress. I had billable hour requirements. I had all of that other stuff that I had to deal with. I woke up and one morning and I said, this is it, I'm done. So I went in to I went into the law firm and I set a meeting with the partner and I said, um, I'm gonna go to India for four months. Thinking that was it, he was gonna fire me. <laughs> and he said, okay, uh, we'll give you a sabbatical, which really floored me. So I went to India. Um, I landed in Bangalore, which is in the south in the state of Karnataka. I traveled three and a half hours south to Mysore, which is um, a place where there was an, a yoga teacher I wanted to study with but also there's um, a university there and there was an Ayurvedic doctor. So I met with her and every single day for four months we worked together. Anywhere from an hour to four hours, it really depended on what I needed. The protocol was so wildly different. We never, we never talked about lupus specifically. She just addressed what my body was showing her. So it, I, I wasn't defined by um, a panel, a blood panel, and I wasn't defined by this name of, you know, that I, they had given me for what was going on. Like, it was just, I was Rachel, 
and this is what was going on today, and this is what we were going to work on. Um, it was incredible. It was life-changing. I'm still in touch with her. She has a huge clinic now that she's created from scratch um, and treats like thousands of people from all over Southeast Asia and elsewhere as well. So she gave me a whole protocol for when I came home. And when I got home and they tested my bloods, it was the first time they were normal since I was diagnosed. So I knew I was onto something. <laughs> but I also knew like I had taken myself out of my life. Um, I had no stress. <laughs> so I had to figure out how to sort of replicate the magic that we had created in New York while having a job and paying bills and all of that day-to-day -day stuff that I had been able to just kind of ignore for a few months. Um, so I went back to work at the law firm and immediately, I would say within two days, I was like, yeah, this is, this is not it. So I saved every penny I could. Six months later, I went to my, my boss again and I sat him down and I said I quit. It was a really good time to sit with a, a lot of uncertainty, which is what really having a chronic illness is, I think, is there's a lot of just not knowing what's coming next and, and being okay with that. It was a year and a half that I took off between law and and premiering Soapwalla where I really just had to figure out what my life could look like to support my health. So when I came back from India, I had like a set of tools that I had worked with, with my doctor on, which really involved um, a lot of herbs, um, a very specific diet. I, I avoid dairy. Um, one of my most recent doctors told me he's actually never seen a lupus patient who doesn't have a dairy allergy. And they, he did a blood test on me for allergies. Um, I feel like the numbers, I'm gonna get this wrong, so don't, don't quote me on this, but it's like, if you're one to 29, you're like fine with milk, like you, your body can absorb all the proteins and break them down. Um, I think mine was like 250. Um, which is pretty common for specifically SLE. Every once in a while, I'll make a decision. I'm like, I want pizza. So I will have, you know, dairy every once in a while, but um, I'll feel it. I'll feel it the next few days. Um, for me also, nightshades. So I'm very allergic to eggplant, um, but I also avoid tomatoes and peppers and to a lesser degree, potatoes. Um, I'll feel it, like my joints will swell up. That's also pretty common for autoimmune patients. And then my Ayurvedic doctor wanted me to cook everything. Um, my GI tract was just in shambles after all of the drugs that I had been on, and it's still pretty sensitive. So I don't eat a lot of raw foods. I do a lot of like one pot cooking, and that is the easiest way for my body to absorb nutrients. Um, most recently when I get a lupus flare, because it's, it's not cured for me, so I still have to really be um, alert and aware of what my body's telling me. So yeah, when I came back, I really wasn't willing to get back on that drug protocol. The whole cocktail of, I think it was like 12, 12 drugs at that point that I had been on before I left. Um, so I, I don't take anything um, prescription now unless it really warrants it, unless I'm in a flare or I have a related illness um, that requires me to utilize uh, pharmaceuticals. And even then, I, and I'm very upfront with the doctors, I'll tell them I take it for the minimum amount of time possible. And if I don't absolutely have to take this, I'm not gonna take it. For my, for systemic lupus, where internal organs are also involved, I would imagine people are on three or four pills at least. Most of the time you'll be on Plaquenil, which is um, an anti-malarial that they prescribe, and a steroid at the very like base. Um, I was on a bunch of things. I was on Celsept, which was an organ transplant drug for your liver because my liver was so heavily affected, um, which is kind of this funny catch-22 because I also now have permanent liver damage from all the drugs I've been on. So I'm <laughs> like... <laughs> The, <laughs> it's like those commercials, when you see those commercials for whatever happy drug they're trying to, to sell you and people are like frolicking in the meadow and then they're like, side effects may include your head will fall off. And I'm like, but if you're treating headaches, and that's exactly what it was for me, like a lot of the heavy duty drugs I was taking to try to minimize the damage done to my liver, the side effect, the main side effect is liver damage. And I think my experience with this whole process that's still ongoing 
um, really was for me, um, plant material, herbs, really good food, getting in touch with myself. It was yoga and meditation and um, more recently boxing. Um, all of that, I responded to so much better than the, the protocol, the drug protocol that I was on. I felt like the, the protocol, it's like that game of whack-a-mole where there's like a little groundhog that pops up and you try to pop him down, like you try to hammer him down and then another one pops up over here and you try to hammer him down and then there's one over here. That's how I felt like my whole health history was. I was going from doctor to doctor and we were whacking moles, but then other ones were still popping up because we weren't getting to what was causing this mole epidemic. <laughs> The Ayurveda, that whole philosophy of looking at what you've got in front of you and then sort of like gently unraveling to what might be the base cause with all of the herbs and all of the plants and oils and all of that really, really made a profound effect on me, which is what ultimately um, is the foundation of Sobwala. How I craft products, how we make them, who we buy from, like our suppliers, all of that. So it's, it's intricately um, intertwined.